I haven't uh, took took the answers till now. Okay. So after uh, writing down the answers, I will just share it with the in the Google folder. Okay. Okay. Sir. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, I have shared the link of the Google Drive with the chat box. Okay. So in today's class, we I think we will be starting with deflection of beams. So for deflection of beams, like we need the uh, deflection formula, the slope formula for uh, very standard loadings. Okay. So I have uh, took a photo of the uh, all the formulae and I have attached the uh, formula in the Google Drive. Okay, under study material folder. So if you are able to access, you just tell me. Okay. So shall we start today's class? Okay, I am starting today's class. So in the previous class, we have seen uh, bending stresses in beams, right? So in today's class, we will be seeing about shear stresses in beams. Okay. So coming to shear stresses in beams. So directly uh, here in shear stresses in beams, I will uh, write down the formula, okay, and I will de uh, derive the shear stress distribution for a rectangular beam, okay, and after that we will be so solving around four problems, and then we will be moving on to deflection of beams, okay. So this is the plan for today's class, and uh, in today's class I will be uh, uh, completing the class by 8:20, okay, since I have another meeting after that. So let tau, okay, this is tau. Let tau be the shear stress developed in a developed at a fiber on the cross section of a beam. Okay, for example, you are having a cross section like this. You are having a rectangular cross section like this. Okay. And uh, in the SFD, uh, in the shear force and bending moment diagrams, like you have seen, right? You have drawn the shear force variation, right? For example, if the shear force diagram for a particular case of loading is like this, okay, then at any cross or at any length of the uh, beam, like you can find what is the shear force on that uh, particular cross section, okay? Based on that shear force, you can you are going to calculate the shear stress developed at that particular cross section, okay? So, shear, this is the uh, rectangular cross section, okay, and uh, this is the neutral axis or the centroidal axis of this uh, rectangular cross section. And uh, you want the shear stress, say, at this fiber, okay. You want to find out the shear stress at this fiber, which is at a distance of y from the neutral axis, okay. This I am naming this particular uh, line. I am naming it as the fiber. Okay. So you want the shear stress value at this particular fiber. Okay. So in order to calculate the shear stress developed at this fiber on the uh, cross section of a beam. Okay. The before that I will write it down. Shear stress. Let tau is the shear stress developed at a fiber. on the cross section of a beam. Okay, then tau can be calculated by this formula P A Y bar divided by I N A which is like the moment of inertia about the neutral axis or the moment of inertia of the cross section okay into B. Okay. So this is the formula for uh, calculating shear stress developed at a fiber on the cross section of a beam. So we will look at what each individual uh, terms means. Okay, where P is the shear force acting on the cross section of the fiber. Okay, shear force acting 
on the cross section of beam okay so you can get it what does this term means right for example if i want to for example if the shear stress is varying like a parabola okay all through along the length of the beam the shear uh, this is the sfd diagram okay so if i want to find out the uh, shear stress at some particular length of the beam then i i can take at which length i want to find out the shear stress okay and based on that uh, i can find out the value of the sfd here okay and once i find out the value of the sfd i can directly put this uh, value of shear force value okay and then a is nothing but the area of hatched portion for example this is the hatched portion okay where a is the area of hatched portion which is above the fiber where tau is to be determined for example at this uh, length of the beam this is the cross section since like cross sections doesn't change that uh, that, that much during our uh, examples okay for examples uh, for a, in our uh, in all our problems which we have seen earlier like uh, the cross section remains the same throughout the length of the beam okay so here here uh, i have actually stated before itself like we are going to determine the shear stress at this fiber okay so the area is nothing but this whole area above the fiber where tau is to be determined okay so area a is actually nothing but the area of hatched portion okay area of hatched portion which is above the fiber you can also uh, note down this while i am writing okay where tau is to be determined and then y bar y bar is actually nothing but the distance of centroid of the hatched portion from the neutral axis of the cross section okay for example since this this is the neutral axis right so uh, this is a rectangular uh, hatched portion so the neutral axis lie around in the middle of this hatched portion right so this is the y bar okay so y bar is nothing but the distance of centroid of the hatched portion from the neutral axis of the cross section okay na means neutral axis and ina you all know right it is actually nothing but the moment of inertia of the cross section okay i am write it in down in short terms moment moi means moment of inertia okay of the cross section and what is ay bar here can anyone say here i have written separately right this is a the total area of the hatched portion and y bar is the distance of centroid from of the hatched portion from the neutral axis so what will be a into y bar moment of area yes it is the first moment of area of the hatched portion about the neutral axis okay it is the first moment of area of hatched portion about the neutral axis okay and b is nothing but the width of cross section where tau is determined okay width of the cross section where tau is to be determined so what is b here it is nothing but this distance this total distance is nothing but b okay so now all the terms are clear in this given formula 
if you have any doubts in this formula or the terms you can ask me or after solving some problems then it will be much more clear okay this formula is very important so this will be used for calculating the shear stresses developed at a fiber on the cross section of a beam okay shall i change the slide yes sir okay so this based on this formula like we will be applying the same formula for uh, the generalized equation for shear stress at a fiber on a rectangular cross section okay in this slide we will derive the generalized equation for shear stress okay tau s is shear stress at a fiber on a rectangular cross section so let us imagine like this as the cross section okay so this is the neutral axis and uh, this whole uh, cross section is of dimensions b and uh, the depth is of dimension d okay so let's say for example i want to determine the uh, shear stress at this given fiber okay so this will be the area of, area of hash to portion where at a fiber where tau is determined okay here we have to take the area which is above the fiber where tau is to be determined and uh, let's say like this is at a distance of y okay this fiber is at a distance of y and this is nothing but neutral axis okay so what will be this distance d by, by 2 minus y. yes it will be d by 2 minus y okay so what we have written for tau it is actually nothing but p into a y bar divided by i n a into b okay so can we substitute uh, each and every term in this formula okay let us suppose like p is a shear force which is which is acting on this particular cross section in the downward direction okay so based on this can we write each and every term what is a here d by 2 minus y into b yeah d by 2 my b into d by 2 minus y okay and uh, what is y bar here what is y bar actually by definition distance of geometric center of the attached area yes distance of the centroid of the hash portion from the neutral axis so what will be uh, y bar here if you are taking y this y plus y yes. plus half of d by 2 minus y yes so it is nothing but y plus half of d by 2 minus y okay so this is the area of the axis portion so you want centroid i mean the centroid will be half of this d by 2 minus y so if you take the distance from the neutral axis it will be y plus half of d by 2 minus y okay and uh, what will be the moment of inertia formula for a rectangular beam or a rectangular cross section b d cube by 12 yeah b d cube by 12 and uh, what is b here it is simply b okay for example if there is a triangular cross section then you have to take uh, b corresponding to this value okay not this value so can i substitute all these things in the uh, p a y bar divided by i n a formula okay so now i'm substituting for p into b into d by 2 minus y into y bar is nothing but y plus 1 by 2 into d by 2 minus y okay divided by b d q divided by 12 into b okay so after substituting this what value are you getting 
can you substitute this and arrive at the final formula anyone P by B D cube by 12, okay. Then I am taking this B by B as constant, okay. 3 Design. by 2. 3 by 2, okay. 3 by 2 P by B D cube into D square minus 4 by square. Uh, 3 by 2, okay. Can you please uh, simplify in terms of like uh, D by 2, the whole square minus Y square into some term, okay. So can you simplify in terms of that? For example, like C to that you are getting this value, okay? The final value should be something like this. It should be B by 2, okay? Into D by 2 the whole square minus Y square, okay? Divided by B. You should get something like this. And after that, if you are substituting it further, then you will get the final answer as 6p divided by bd cube, okay, into d by 2 the whole square minus y square. Are you getting this? Is everyone getting this or not? Yes, sir. Okay. So you please work out this and then at last you will be getting this answer, okay? Good. Yeah. So the final expression is clear, right? Maybe I'll yes, write this B clear. Yes, sir. Yeah. This is B, not 6, okay? Okay. So, this is the variation of the shear stress around this rectangular cross section, okay? Let's say uh, we have taken uh, the Y as the distance from the distance of the fiber from the neutral axis, right? So, from this equation, like 6P divided by BD cube into D by 2 the whole square minus Y square, what can you say about the uh, variation of the shear stress with respect to the cross section. Parabola. Yeah, it is a parabola since you are having y square here. Okay. So the variation of shear stress is a parabola along this cross section. And can you say at which fiber the shear stress is maximum and what is its value? At the neutral axis center. Yeah, at the center, since like when you are substituting y equals to 0 at that uh, point or at that uh, cross section or at this uh, particular fiber, the shear stress value will turn out to be 3 by 2 P by BD, okay? So that is the maximum value. So maximum value of tau, which is shear stress is, is nothing but tau is equals to... Um, 3 by 2 into P by BD and this is at Y equals to 0 or neutral axis, okay? And uh, what you can say about this P by BD? P is nothing but the shear force divided by B into D is nothing but the area of cross section. So this is nothing but the average shear stress. Yeah. This is nothing but average shear stress and the average maximum shear stress is nothing but 1.5 times of the average shear stress. And this is valid only for a rectangular cross sectional beam. Okay. So here I am drawing the variation of the shear stress along the cross section. Okay. This is the neutral axis. 
okay and what we have already seen is like it follows a parabolic variation okay and it is maximum at neutral axis okay so this is d by 2 and this is d by 2 and this is the neutral axis and here tau is maximum and what you can say at the extreme fiber ends what is the value of shear st uh, stress at the extreme fibers zero yeah zero. yeah it will be zero okay from this you can say tau is equals to zero at the extreme fibers and uh, from this this equation is very much essential okay this equation here i am name, naming this as number one okay from equation number one we can uh, derive the following i mean we can infer the following information okay like tau is actually or the shear stress is directly proportional to what it's it's a function of like d is constant p is constant b is constant d is constant for this given rectangular cross section so which is varying why yeah distance from the neutral axis yes so it's a, it, it it will be varying as the square of the distance from the neutral axis okay and the second inference is at a neutral axis tau is maximum okay and at extreme fibers i'm writing it as ef okay at that extreme fibers tau is equals to 0 okay and as tau increases like we could see, I mean, as y increases, we could see like tau decreases, okay, or the shear stress decreases. Up to this, it is clear or not? Repeat, uh, repeat last point. Uh, which thing I have to repeat? The last sentence. Okay, see, as y increases, okay, or the or the distance from the neutral axis increases like shear stress decreases okay? okay this is the variation of the shear stress so for rectangular cross section is it clear yes sir yeah so based on this we will be doing some problems and then we will see about uh, shear stresses in uh, t sections and uh, 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 flanges and web okay so note down this problem and uh, try to solve this problem and come up with the answer okay i'm giving you um, two minutes okay So, have you found out what is the value of uh, D or the depth of the beam? 0 0.044 mm, No. Please check whether you have uh, written the units or substituted the units correctly. Because I am having a different answer. Let's see. Maybe my own answer could be wrong. 22.5 sir. 225. Yeah, 2 to 5 mm. So please check your answer whether the depth of the beam is 2 to 5 mm. Okay. For example, how we are going to proceed this problem? Anyone? Yes, sir. Yeah. At first, we have to calculate the uh, tau max. Okay. Tau max is given here. Okay. Okay. No, I mean, then after that, we are applying, we could. Okay. Get the value of D. Okay. 
so tau max is here is nothing but 1.5 times of tau average right which is yes, nothing sir. but 3 by 2 of tau average yes sir 3 yeah. by 2 e by d yes so it is nothing but 3 by 2 into p by dd yeah so from this tau max is given as 4 okay here i am substituting all the values in newton and mm okay so 4 is equal to 3 by 2 into 60 into 10 to the power of 3 divided by b is nothing but 100 into d so we are getting 22.5 sir we are getting 22.5 yes sir <coughs> okay wait let me check okay so d is nothing but uh, 3 into 60 into 10 to the power of 3 divided by 4 into 2 into 100. So 3 into 60 into 1000 into 4 into 2 into 100. No, I am getting 22, 25 mm only. Yes, sir. Yeah. So please check your calculation, okay? So if, is everyone getting this answer? Yes sir. Yeah. Yes sir. Okay. Fine. So shall we proceed to the next problem? Yes sir. Okay. Someone has asked me to wait or no? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I am proceeding to the next problem. Okay. So this is the new problem. So here, if a beam of rectangular cross section is subjected to a vertical shear force S, then how much shear force will be carried by the upper one third of the section? Okay. So. What is the cross section they have given here? Rectangular. rectangular. Cross yeah, it's a rectangular cross section. Okay. So let us assume the uh, width as B and the depth as D. Okay. And the shear force they have given is yes. Okay. So they are asking in the question like how much shear force. Will be carried by the upper one third of the section. Okay, so this is the section. Okay, this is the top section, and, the, and I mean this is the upper section, and this is the lower section. So they are asking one third of the upper section. What is the shear force carried by this section? Yes. So here, what uh, we have seen in the bending, actually we have seen a similar question uh, like this in the bending stress also, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So what I have done there? Uh, we integrated from yes. small. Yes. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shear same. stress into area. Integration of shear stress into area. Yes. So uh, shear stress into area. So here we will be considering a small strip similarly. Okay. Like as we seen in the bending problem also, okay. This strip is of width b and thickness dy, okay. okay. Sorry, here I will write. Okay, so df is equals to tau into b into dy, okay. Shear stress into area of the small strip, okay. So after that, what I should do? I have to integrate it. In order to find out the value of F or the shear force, from what will be the limit of integration here? Can anyone say? D by six to D by two. Yes, it is from D by six to D by two. Good. So this is actually D by six and this is D by two. Since like uh, in the question they have given like upper one third of the section. Okay, so one. Yeah. Up the whole upper section is nothing but d by 2 so one third of this upper section it will be nothing but 1 by third of d by 2 so it is nothing but d by 6 to d by 2 okay so integration of d by 6 to d by 2 tau into b into dy okay 
and what will be the value of tau here s shear force okay into area what is the area of this hashed portion b d y yeah that that is the b d y whereas here uh, like uh, tau is equals to p a y bar divided by uh, i n a into b right yes or not so here area will be b into d by 3 no b into d by 6 Mm, see, for example, here the area will be b into d by two plus y divided by two. Yeah. Yes. See, this whole area is nothing but, for example, here I have taken at a corresponding y. Okay, let us imagine this as. Like this as the fiber which is at a distance of y, okay, from the neutral axis. So what will be the area of this or the hatched portion which is above the above this fiber? That is our uh, basic definition, right? Here I have taken a small strip, okay. Which is of length b and the thickness dy, which is at a distance of y from the neutral axis. Okay, so which area I have to calculate now here? This area I have to calculate now. Sir, lower strip of hatched area is it at distance of distance of d by six from any? Yeah, lower strip is at a distance of d by six. Higher strip is at a distance of d by two. Okay. so somewhere in between i am taking a fiber which is between this location okay or between this these two regions but at a distance of y from the neutral axis so by our basic definition we come to know the area a is nothing but the uh, uh, area of the hatched portion above the fiber which we want to calculate the shear stress okay so can you say what is the area here d by 2 minus y into b Yes, so d by two minus y into b. So it is clear to everyone why we have taken this area. See, the limits of integration is from d by six to d by two. Okay. This is d by six and this is d by two. Okay. Between this, what we have done, we have taken a small strip. Okay, which is of elemental area d a. Okay, and this is more or less equal to we can assume this as the fiber. Okay, since the dy is uh, approximately equal to zero. Okay, so this fiber I am taking at a distance of y from the neutral axis. So which area I need? This area I need. So it will be nothing but b into d by two minus y. Is it clear or not? Yes, sir. It is clear. Okay. So, what will be the value of y bar? Uh, y plus d by two minus y by two. Okay. Y bar is nothing but what you are saying. Y plus d by two minus y by two. No. It will be y plus d by two and by two. Yeah, by two. Hello, sir. By yes. by two means by four. The thickness of upper section is d by two. Okay. No, the upper distance is nothing but d by two, not the thickness. The upper fiber is at a length of d by two. No, above a neutral axis. Yeah, this uh, extreme fiber. Let let's suppose this as the extreme fiber. This extreme fiber is at a distance of d by two from the neutral axis, and its one third will be d by six. Yes, and its one third will be d by six. Yes. So from d by six to d by two, 
we have to integrate the shear stress into the differential area and then you have to calculate what is the value of uh, shear force. Okay. Sir, what will be the value of INA here? INA will be nothing but BD cube by 12 because it is the uh, cross sectional, uh, I mean, moment of inertia of the cross section or the rectangular cross section. So it will be BD cube by 12. Okay. Yeah. So do, did you understand why you are getting Y bar as Y plus D by 2 by 2? Yes, sir. Yeah. Since, like, y, what is actually Y bar? It is the distance of the centroid of the hatched portion from the neutral axis, right? So this is the hatched portion and this distance is nothing but y from the neutral axis. So, okay, yes. here I have drawn, right? So here I will write. Okay, so this whole distance is d by 2 and this distance is y. Okay, so if you are writing like d by 2 plus y divided by 2, then you will be getting the mid, mid value. Okay, the distance of the mid <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> the distance of the mid value from the neutral axis and this is nothing but d by 2 plus y divided by 2. Okay. Sir, this is d by 6 I can I have to. D by 6 is the lower end. Okay. Lower end of the total region. D by uh, 2 is the upper end of the I higher region okay so in between this d by 6 and d by 2 i have taken a small strip okay which is of length b i mean with b and uh, this thickness dy okay dy we can say it is approximately equal to 0 okay so this is d by 6 so this is the hatched region okay and this total length is from here from the neutral axis it is nothing but y okay and uh, yes, yeah, this sorry here total length d by two. Yes, total length is d by two, and up to here it is y. Yes, sir. So for the centroid, like this centroid, I need right. So up to here, I know it is y, and up to here, I know it is d by two. So y plus d by two divided by two will give the centroid of this rectangular Hatchley region. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Yeah, it is clear to everyone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So substitute all these value and find out what is the uh, value of F. So it will be like S into what is the area B into D by two minus Y and uh, Y plus d by 2 divided by 2 i am taking it to the denominator okay 2 into bd cube by 12 into b okay so maybe you can substitute this into a simpler term okay so it will be like this will be 6 and uh, 1b gets cancelled so it will be s into maybe we can uh, take uh, y as i mean minus y i will take it out okay so that i can write it in terms of d by 2 the whole square minus y square okay no d by 2 minus y and d by 2 plus y can be written as s into d by 2 the whole square minus y square divided by and 6 also I am taking it to the numerator and it will become bd cube. This uh, substitution is fine right? Yes. Yeah. 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 So it is 6 s yes. into d by 2 the whole square minus y square divided by bd cube okay then what what should i do i have to integrate it from 
d by 6 to d by 2. Integration of d by 6, 6x, uh, 6s divided by b d q. Integration of d by 2, the whole square minus y square. Okay. So, 6s divided by b d cube, I am taking it outside. Okay. And integration of d by 6 to d by 2, d by 2 the whole square minus y square. Sir, is the answer 7 by 27 v? 7? Yes, yes. 7s by 27. Yes, yes. That is the answer. Yeah. Okay. So, one minute. I will insert a new slide here. So what we have written? 6s divided by bdq. I mean f is equals to f is equals to 6s divided by bdq. Everyone is understanding, right? Is there any uh, doubt means you can ask, okay? Uh, d by 2 the whole square minus y square, okay? So, on integration what we will be getting is 6s divided by bd cube d by 2 the whole square into y minus y cube divided by 3, okay? For this we are substituting d by 6 to d by 2. So, which will be nothing but 6s divided by bd cube, okay? Upper limit minus lower limit, okay? d by 2 the whole square into d by 2 minus d by 2 the whole cube divided by 3 minus d by 6 d by 2 the whole square into d by 6 minus d by 6 the whole cube divided by 3 okay so after this success d by term also there which which term is there b d y sir d into d y d of equal to tau b d y okay so i have missed b b term that's the thing you are saying right oh, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah yeah okay fine so here so b and b gets cancelled right so here we won't be getting any b is this fine oh, yes sir okay Thank you. So after substituting this, what value we will be getting like it will be d cube divided by 4 minus d cube divided by 8 into 24, okay, minus d cube divided by 12, I mean sorry, d power 4, right, here 4 is there, here 8 is, 4, 8, yeah, 4, 24. If I am doing any calculation mistake, please inform me, okay? d cube divided by 6. So, 6 cube is like 216 into 3. So, if you substitute this, what value you are getting? 7s divided by 27. 27. Yeah. So, this is the shear force which is carried by the upper one third of the section. Is it clear? Yes. Yeah. And with respect to how we are calculating this area, how we are calculating this centroid, everything is clear, right? <laughs> yeah. Or else I will uh, say once again, okay? If anyone wants. Or shall we proceed to the next problem? Next problem, sir. Okay. So this is another problem. So what is the shear stress at the neutral axis in a beam of triangular section with a base of 40 mm and height 20 mm subjected to a shearing force of 3 kN. Okay. So you are having a triangle. Okay. Base is 40 mm and height is 20 mm. Okay. And uh, you need to find out what 
the shear stress at the neutral axis okay where the neutral axis will be located it will be at a distance of h by 3 from the base right yes sir yes yeah okay so this will be 20 by 3 and this will be 40 by 3 okay so you need to find out the shear stress at this neutral axis same so, formula sir yes same formula so p a y bar divided by i n a into b okay so here again we will write each term separately okay so p is nothing but 3 kilo newtons right so p is equals to 3 into 10 to the power of 3 newtons okay and what is the value of area a or what half is into base half into b into h yes so which area you need to take here so this is the hatched portion right yes sir so this is the fiber you need the shear stress and area of the uh, hatched portion which is above the fiber so this area you need to find out so before that you need to find out what is the base value so what is the base value here base of this into 40 2 3rd into 40 okay 2 3rd into 40 so how we you are calculated like from similar triangles we can use okay yes yeah. yes so 40 divided by 20 equals to b divided by this total length is 40 by 3 mm, yeah 40 by 3 so from this you will get the b value as uh, this will be 2 so 2 into 40 divided by 3 so b is 80 by 3 is it correct yeah okay so b also we found out it is 80 by 3 and uh, uh, area is half into base into height okay here the base is 80 by 3 into height what is the height here 40 by 3 40 by 3 yeah yeah so what is the value of y bar then h by 3 h by 3 yes mean so, 40 by 9 yes so area i mean centroid of this hatched portion okay so the hatched portion is itself is a small triangle okay so the centroid will be one third of one third from here okay so the total height of this hatched portion is nothing but 40 by 3 okay so 1 by uh, 3 of 40 by 3 which will be nothing but 40 by 9 40 by 9 and what will be the INA value BH cube by 36 into B yes BH cube divided by 36 so B is 40 into H cube is nothing but 20 cube divided by 36 so we have found out all the data okay so can you say what is the value of tau or the shear stress at the neutral axis yeah yeah is this clear or is someone having any doubt you can ask how we are taking the area of the hatched portion and how we are calculating the centroid of the hatched portion like that so if you have any doubts you please ask Forty by three. Forty by nine. Forty by two MPA. How much? Two. Two or pardon, 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 pardon. I made a mistake. Okay. Sir, is it 50.6? 50.6, 50. 50. no. Please check, oh, oh. Please check whether you are whether you are getting 10 mega pascal as the answer, okay? Maybe I will also try to do this, okay? So the, 10, 10, 10, 10, sir. Yeah. 10. Please check whether you are getting 10 mega pascal, okay? That is the answer. 
numerator 12,000 and uh, denominator is uh, okay. 1200. Okay. So is everyone getting 10 megapascal or should I have to show the what is the value of numerator denominator like someone has said right this 12,000. divided by i n a is like 40 into 20 cube divided by 36 into 80 by 3 so 3 into 1000 into 80 into, into 40 divided by 2 into 3 into 3 into 9 so numerator i think based on my calculation what i am getting is like 23 70 370 divided by denominator is 40 into 20 into 20 into 20 10 MPA sir 10 MPA you are getting it right? Oh, yes sir yeah. uh, okay yes sir yeah so in the denominator also I am getting like 2 3 7 037 okay yes sir yeah so is everyone getting yes sir okay so we will proceed to the next problem okay yeah okay so what is the time? Okay. Seven fifty five. So, yeah. Fine. So a beam of uh, I section four hundred mm deep and one eighty mm wide has flange of thickness twenty mm each and web thickness twenty five mm. Okay. So before this, maybe I uh, what I will try to do is like I will give you a simple concept. Okay, and then I will come to this. So, this is a T section, okay? What I am going to draw here is a T section. And uh, this is termed as the flange, okay? And this is the web, okay? So, here, if they ask what is the shear stress at the flange, what you will say or how you will calculate? This is the flange, right? So you will take this as the fiber, okay? This as the fiber and then you will calculate tau of flange is equals to, maybe this is uh, subjected to a P shear force and let's term this as the area, okay? A. And you will calculate the centroid of this area, okay? I am writing down as YF, okay? area of the flange into centroid of this flange from the neutral axis. You will get the neutral axis somewhere around here. Okay. Or maybe above this also. Okay. So this will be the centroid of this flange. YF. And this is the area of this flange. Okay. Divided by the total uh, moment of cross, uh, moment of inertia of the total T section into B. And what is the B here? This total width of this T flange, okay? For example, this total width, let's imagine, say it is around 100 mm, okay? And this web thickness is around 20 mm, okay? So here, in, for BF, I have to substitute 100 mm, okay? Yes, sir. Yeah, this is, the, uh, this is when they are asking the shear stress on the flange, okay? If they ask, shear stress in the web then what you will do you can take this as the web right okay this i can term this is also the web okay so if i draw the maybe the shear stress variation at this point itself at this junction of flange and web you will be getting two shear stress values okay that is the thing which I am going to explain here. Okay. Here also the shear stress is and shear force is same for the entire cross section. 
here also the uh, area is uh, is nothing but like the above portion okay because we have taken this as the fiber okay this web we are taking before that we have taken the flange this flange we have taken but here we are taking this web okay so again uh, the uh, area above the uh, fiber of the web okay which is nothing but af into yf divided by ina and for b what i should do i have to substitute width of web which is nothing but 20 mm okay here bf is nothing but 100 mm and b the web is nothing but 20 mm so at this junction what you will be getting is like for example here you know at the extreme end the shear stress is actually zero okay and here you will be adding at a uh, flange okay for example tau flange divided by tau web or tau web divided by tau flange okay which is inversely proportional to v web divided by v flange okay so whether you will be getting a higher value at the flange or you will be getting a bigger value at the flange than the web sir web ka higher value see this is this total region is called web okay so at the junction we have taken what is the uh, at the junction we are finding out what is the uh, shear stress at the web okay at web higher value yes at web you will be uh, getting higher value okay because b f is greater than b f is greater than b web okay due to this tau web is greater than tau flange okay so when you draw the shear stress variation at this junction part you will be getting a variation something like this okay this is the junction part so this is tau flange and this is tau web is it clear what i said now yes sir so based on this if they ask any question you should be in a position to do this okay they they can ask what is the ratio of the shear stress, uh, stress in the flange to the web okay so it, it will be simply nothing but b web divided by b flange or the width of web divided by width of flange okay and yf is different in both cases no yf is the same in both cases so that only we have cancelled everything and we are getting this formula b web divided by b flange because see here we are considering this fiber right the junction fiber but it is lying in the web portion okay so if you are taking af is like the area of the hatched portion which is above the web and also yf will also not change because that is the centroid of this uh, hatched portion from the new, uh, neutral axis understood na uh yes sir okay yeah so now we are proceeding to the next problem okay so in this what they have given is like they have given a beam uh, of i section 400 mm deep and 180 mm wide as flange of thickness 20 mm each and web thickness 25 mm okay beam is sub simply supported at ends and carries concentrated load equals to 800 kN at mid of beam calculate maximum intensity of uh, shear stress in the section and uh, uh, you can take this moment of inertia about the neutral axis is 3.5736 into 10 to the power of 8 mm power 4 okay so first can you say what is the shear force here at, at the cross section of the beam 400 kN yes it is 400 kN not 800 kN okay so based on the equation given here for example if you take this part of the equation beam is simply supported okay this beam is of i cross section and it is simply supported okay and you are adding a, a point load or a concentrated load of 80 800 kN at its mid span okay so what will be the reactions at this it will be 400 and 400 okay since it is a symmetric beam and when you draw the shear force diagram okay 
and it will be like 400 new kilonewton sorry 400 kilonewton and at mid span you will be adding 800 kilonewton and then here again you will be adding 400 kilonewton so at any cross section along the length of the beam you will be getting the shear force as 400 kilonewton only so this is the very important part this you have understood right why we are writing shear force here p as 400 kilonewton Sir, at mid, midpoint also we are going to take 400 kilonewton. No, at midpoint if they ask like uh, you will be get uh, having like uh, 800 kilonewton only. At midpoint if they ask you will be calculating 800 kilonewton. Okay, since like no sorry, sorry sorry sorry. See at midpoint also you will be taking 400 kilonewton only because sign is actually different. Okay, one is positive and another one is negative. Okay, so positive corresponds to upper section. Yes, maybe like at that uh, thing, maybe you can uh, uh, say like the variation of shear stress is something like one, at one end it is positive and uh, at the other end it is like something uh, in the opposite direction. Something like that you can imagine. So at some point it will be crossing zero. Yeah, might, might be, might be. So uh, zero cross kar to V zero ho jayega. No, no, no. See, for example, here they have asked calculate the maximum intensity of shear stress in the section. Okay. So here at any point, if you take the section is like in the majority of the section, except at this mid span, it is 400 kilonewtons only. Okay. So based on this only, you have to calculate the shear stress value, not based on this uh, mid span. Okay. Even at the mid span, you could see like the shear stress at one point it is positive and the other point it is negative. So you can ignore actually the, uh, I mean, you can, you don't need to calculate the shear stress at that mid span. Okay. Other than that mid span, you can calculate the shear stress. Okay. Yes, sir. See, since uh, in this one, uh, you can take this middle portion itself. At one thing, like you are getting a positive value of shear force. And in the other direction, you are adding a negative value of shear force. Okay. So either only one you have to consider. So here you are considering only 400 kilonewtons, not 800 kilonewtons. But whereas this, yeah, whereas this concentrated load is nothing but 800 kilonewtons. But whereas the variation of this force along this beam is at a single point is nothing but 400 kilonewtons only. Okay. So based on this, you yes, calculate, sir. yeah. So based on this, you calculate what is the shear stress. Maximum intensity, why they have given is nothing but they are asking you to kind, uh, calculate the uh, uh, shear stress along the, above the neutral axis, okay. Since for I section, uh, rectangular section and uh, square section, I think so. A square and circular for uh, for all these things like the shear stress is maximum at the neutral axis okay for i section circular section rectangular square and t section for all these things t section the shear stress is maximum at the neutral axis and is 3 by 2 of tau average no 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 only for rectangle, uh, triangle and uh, square, you will be getting like 3 by 2 of tau average. For example, for square, for rectangle, you will be getting tau max or tau uh, max or tau neutral axis, okay, is equals to 3 by 2 of tau average, okay. Only for rectangle and square. Yeah, and also triangle also. For triangle also, you will be having 3 by 2 of tau average. These are the things only you can uh, remember. For remembrance, maybe you can take this. Okay. But uh, in order to actually find out how, uh, each and everything, then you have to proceed according to, like we have described, like 
like uh, how we have find out the generalized equation for a rectangular cross section similar to that you have to find out the uh, for a square cross section or for a triangular cross section and then you have to find out what is the maximum shear stress and where it is occurring something like that okay and for a uh, square cross section the maximum value of shear stress is nothing but 4 by 3 of tau average these are for your information okay okay these are like for one marks i, I have said these things sir 4 by 3 wala kaun sa tha for a uh, circular cross section for oh. circular okay sir yes okay yeah so coming back to this problem maybe i could finish only this problem i think so okay so you are having an i section okay in the meantime you can pr proceed with the uh, calculation okay if you know so what they are asking here calculate the maximum intensity of shear for uh, shear stress okay maximum intensity occurs at the neutral axis so you know for a, a, a i section this is the neutral axis right at, at the mid of the cross section okay this is the neutral axis so above this you have to calculate the shear stress okay so this whole area you need and you have to find out the centroid of this whole area okay for example a into y bar p a y bar divided by i n a into b okay b is nothing but this width of the flange okay or sorry width of the web which is nothing but 25 mm okay so b is this is newtons and b is 25 mm and uh, i and a they have given in the question okay and uh, what uh, p also they have given in the question so right now what you have to find a y bar okay so how you will find here a into y bar whether you will go separate separately or can, can you find out like a y bar is equals to some other term see for this whole shaded region i have to calculate what is Uh, the area and what is the centroid of this hatch portion okay for that what i will do is like i can write this a into y bar is nothing but let us take this as a1 okay and this as a2 okay so i can write this as a1 into y1 bar plus a2 into y2 bar i can write it like this or not sir what yes. is sir for this question yes what is the answer sir Answer is forty eight point seven five seven megapascal. Forty eight a four point eight seven five. Uh huh. Forty eight point seven five seven. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you have to find out what is the uh, a y bar or a a into y bar of this whole shaded region. Okay. To in order to find out this, we are actually splitting these two uh, this whole single edged area into two. uh separate areas okay this one area of flange and this is the area of web okay and then i will find out what is the centroid of this a1 from the neutral axis and this is y1 bar and again i will find out what is the centroid of this web from the neutral axis and this i will name it as y2 bar okay and that is equals to a into y bar So can you say what is the value of a into y bar now? One zero eight nine triple zero. One zero eight nine triple zero. Yes, correct. So a into y bar is nothing but a one. So this is like four hundred mm deep, right? And uh, uh, thickness is flange thickness is twenty mm. So this will be how much? Three sixty. okay and uh, this is like uh, 180 mm wide so a y bar is equals to what is a1 here area of flange 
इंटू ट्वेंटी या इंटू Uh, इतना तो मतलब कि 48 तो हो ही नहीं सकता सर 4.8757 ही आ रहा है व्हाट 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 आई डोंट या ओके सर सही है सही है सो ए वन इज नथिंग बट 180 एटी इंटू ट्वेंटी एंड वॉट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ वाई वन ईयर 90 सॉरी 190 या It is 190. Since you have to take the y1 value from the neutral axis, okay? So I have actually marked it here, right? Okay. So this value you need. So here 10 will come and here 180, okay? So the total value is 190. Plus, what is the area of a2? 25 into 180. Yeah. Into 90. Yes, into ninety. Okay, so what is the value of a y bar you are getting? One zero eight nine. Yes, one zero eight nine triple zero. Okay. M M Q. Okay. And then it's simple, right? You can directly substitute the uh, things, and you can find out the answer. Okay, so it is like four hundred into ten to the power of three into areas like one comma zero eight nine comma zero 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 divided by I N A I N A. What is I N A here? Which they have given here? Three point five seven three six into ten to the power of eight. And what is the B value? Twenty five. Okay. Twenty. Yeah. So what is the tau value you are getting? Finally. Four. Eight point seven five. Yes. Forty eight point seven five seven megapascal. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, up to now it is clear, right? What how you are going to calculate shear stress in beams? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So next we will be proceeding to deflection of beams. Okay. Okay. Distribution. What? 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 Someone was asking some question. Distribution of shear stress. Distribution of shear stress for rectangular beam we have seen, right? Ah, uh, for I section. I section. Okay. So if you want for I section, okay. See, for I section it will be at the neutral axis it will be higher, right? And at the intermediate of flange and web, you will be having two shear stress values. Okay, so it will be something like this. And here you will be getting a sorry. Okay. This is the variation of shear stress with respect to the I section, okay? And this is the neutral axis, where tau is maximum. And this is flange, and this is flange, and here you will be having two shear stress values, okay? And the variation is also parabolic, okay? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So now shall we proceed to deflection of beams then? we will uh, today see an intro on uh, uh, deflection of beams okay and then in the next class we will be solving some problems on deflection of beams okay okay sir yeah okay yeah okay so the aim of this chapter is to derive the expressions for maximum slope okay and maximum deflection in uh, for various beams under different loading conditions okay here in this whole chapter we will be uh, uh, discussing about how to find uh, what is the maximum slope okay and what is the maximum deflection for various kinds of beam loadings okay
okay and this maximum slope or actually why we are actually finding out all these maximum slope and maximum deflection based on these values what we are actually going to do anyone for design perspective yeah design perspective mm. proper yes for example if you are de uh, designing some beams okay for a particular loading conditions you will be uh, given like for example the uh, uh, slope should not be greater than this okay or the value of deflection should not be greater than a critical value okay so based on that you have to design the cross section of the beam okay for all those designing purposes you have to find out what is the maximum slope and what is the maximum deflection okay so can you say what is the difference between like a uh, uh, a bending and a buckling buckling means very slender very long okay cross, like in columns okay in columns axial axial and transverse yes that okay. is the thing yeah that is the main difference okay so the main difference between uh, bending and buckling is like this for example this is a long slender beam let us imagine okay one person was mentioning like uh let us say this is also like column okay but this is also a long sl slender column okay but this is subjected to an axial load i mean a transverse shear load okay which is simply supported during this time you will say this as bending okay under this load this beam as bent like that you will say okay whereas maybe this this is what longitudinal axis of this beam okay but if the same loading is like this this is also the same slender column okay and this is also simply supported and here you are actually uh, at the top maybe you can see an axial compressive load okay this this is also a longitudinal axis during this time you will say the uh, beam is going to buckle okay so for shear load you will say this as bending okay and for axial compressive load you will say it as buckling okay and also like uh, with respect to sign convention i will say you okay which is the sign convention we are going to follow for uh uh she uh, what to say uh, slope and deflection okay so you are having a cantilever beam like this and you are going to apply a point load at its end okay or at its tip and due to this what happens the beam gets bent right so this is the original portion uh, original position of the beam and after this this is the final portion i i am drawing it here exaggerated okay okay so this is the deflection curve we will say this is termed as the deflection curve so at any point if you see whether i mean i actually drawn the figure little bit wrong okay it should be in the shape of a parabola okay why i am drawing it in the shape of the parabola i will let you know soon okay okay this should be in the shape of a parabola we have already uh, studied right what is m by we have studied this bending equation right m by i equals to e by rho or e by r here what is the r radius of curvature okay yes sir yeah so this radius of curvature is from the uh, uh, bending moment okay for example if the bending moment is constant okay that i need to look actually one minute see for example if the bending moment is constant when you are drawing the bending moment for a given loading and if the bending moment is constant this happens during some particular kind of thing okay when this uh, kind of uh, loading will occur can anyone say for a beam sir constant Yeah. constant bending moment and no shear force yes constant bending moment and no shear force for example you can take a beam like this like 
and uh, at the on ends, other way we can say linear linearly elastic linearly elastic uh, no okay you are saying based on the elastic curve based on the yes, elast sir. yeah deflection curve you are saying like that yeah okay yeah see for example this bending this is a beam okay when you are subjecting at the ends two bending couples okay this is m and this is m then if you draw the shear force diagram it will be zero right shear force diagram is equals to zero and what will be the bending moment diagram it will be a constant thing like this okay Due sir one thing i uh, sorry for jumping in uh, one thing i had to uh, ask you that only yes. kappa equal to 1 by rho equal to m by ei uh, where ei is uh, flexural rigidity what 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 kappa equal to 1 by rho equal to m by ei okay for moment yeah. curvature okay you are saying about m by uh, ei right yes sir okay see and 1 by rho Oh, uh, okay okay now i got it now i got it it's almost same yes okay yes sir okay see when you are having the bending moment as constant okay the bending moment as constant what will be the radius of curvature sir parabola no 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 radius of curvature no see you are having bending moment as constant so the radius of curvature will also be constant because it's a circular arc right ha huh. okay when you are drawing like this this bent uh, beam will be bent something similar to like this okay and you will be having the uh, radius of curvature as the circular arc okay yes sir yeah so when there is no bending moment itself for example for a particular kind of loading when there is no bending moment itself for example bending moment is zero then at that time what will happen what will be the it radius be... of cur curvature won't it be constant sir no see bending moment itself is zero so what will uh, if the bending moment is zero will the beam bend or it will no yeah it will it don't bend yeah it will stay as a straight line for that particular region where bending moment is zero huh. so please okay, will you repeat this last part what what are done okay see okay i will repeat it once again see for example for a particular uh, bending moment okay where you are having a constant bending moment value okay during that time you will have the radius of curvature as a circular arc okay since the bending moment is constant uh, the radius of curvature is also constant yes sir okay so during that time you will be having only circular arc whereas the bend if the bending moment value itself is zero okay this value itself is zero what happens to the radius of curvature of the beam infinity infinity yeah infinity so it will be a straight line right so for a straight line the radius of curvature is infinity and what will be the uh, for example if the bending moment varies what will be the radius of curvature it will be like a parabola okay at each point you will be having different different uh, slope and different different deflection that is the thing i want to say here okay now you are now you got it right why i uh, said all these things like why what happens like bending moment is constant what happens like bending moment is zero and what happens like bending moment varies yes sir okay yeah hmm. so at each point if i take the slope and the deflection thing you will be getting a different value okay the slope and deflection are always found out by uh, drawing a tangent to the deflection curve okay and where it will be zero for this particular loading and where it will be higher for this particular loading at fixed end it will be zero and it will yes. be higher at free end for both slope and deflection okay yes yeah for uh, at the fixed end here you could see slope is actually zero for example if i draw a tangent like this the 
angle which with uh, the deflection curve which makes with the tangent is actually zero okay and also here you can see y is equals to zero whereas here this is y okay which is maximum at the tip okay and if you see the slope it will be something like this okay and uh, if you measure again in which direction you will measure either in this direction you will measure or in this direction you will measure sir from positive x x oh, oh from positive x okay see uh, i my what i have learned is like uh, in which direction the uh, uh, slope direction is actually acute angle in that direction i will measure the slope okay or in the anti clockwise direction uh, i i will measure okay here yeah, this yes. is theta b which is equals to i mean theta is equals to theta max okay in which direction you are getting acute angle in that direction i will measure the slope yes sir okay mm. yeah and with respect to the sign convention okay these are the things which we are going to uh, see in the problems okay so for sign convention if theta is in anti clockwise direction it is positive and if theta is in clockwise direction it is negative for acute angle alone okay see here this direction we have taking it as acute angle whereas here it is obtuse angle right so in the acute angle when i am measuring in which direction i am measuring this anti clockwise or clockwise clockwise yeah clockwise clockwise so it is negative here okay sir but while we solve on uh, shear force and bending moment then you told us to take uh, clockwise as a positive sir. and that is for like uh, with respect to bending moment and shear force i said for bending moment and shear force i asked you to take left as clockwise right anti clockwise as positive yes sir. okay and for shear force i told like mm. like like if you have a section like this and if you have a variation of the net shear force like this means then you take this as a positive one <laughs> okay okay yeah this is this is for the sign convention for slope okay and what is the sign convention for uh, y or the deflection if it is upwards it is pos positive upward positive and downward negative and where uh, it will intersect the slope would be zero yeah so for deflection the up, if it is towards the upwards means it is positive for example if it is deflected like this means it is positive if it is deflected like this means it is negative okay so up to this it is clear right yes sir yes yeah. so the time is 8:30 okay shall we stop here now okay yes sir if you wish yeah sorry i have a meeting you. at 8:30 so i have to stop yeah now. yeah definitely so in the next class we will be seeing up to 9:00 okay and we will uh, uh, see about the deflection of okay. winds maxwell's re reciprocity theorem and i have uh, uh, given the uh, what to say the photo of all the uh, formula of used in deflection of beams okay go through that once before the next class okay okay sir thank you sir okay sir yeah thank you thank you thank you sir thank you bye sir thank you thank you sir thank you thank you Which photo? Okay. Uh, can you access the Google Drive? Shivnarayan Mishra. Can you access the Google Drive?
Yeah. Okay. Hello, sir. Yes. When you are going to upload that homework solution? Uh,